tragedy struck yesterday when a Canadian military CH-148 Cyclone helicopter crashed while conducting NATO operations near Greece, killing one military member. Five others are still missing as the search continues as we speak. Now, the helicopter was deployed with the frigate HMCS Fredericton, working with the Greeks, the Turks, and the Italians and our NATO allies. Earlier today, the chief of the defense staff, General Vance, said the entire Cyclone helicopter fleet is now on an operational pause as flight safety teams work to rule out any flight, uh, fleet-wide problems. Now, for the people of Nova Scotia, where the frigate was based, this is just another tragic blow after the mass murder that took place in their home province. And today, to make matters worse, the only confirmed fatality is a Nova Scotian. Sub-Lieutenant Abigail Kobar, a maritime, listen to her, this is her playing, a maritime systems engineering officer originally from Toronto. She was killed in the crash. She'd just been on board playing the bagpipes to honor those who had lost their lives in the shooting. Now she's gone as well. The military just read the names of the others who are still missing. Let me go to them to do that. Still missing is Sub-Lieutenant Matthew Pike, a Naval Warfare Officer and Bridge Watchkeeper on board HMCS Fredericton. Captain Kevin Hagen, pilot, originally from Nanaimo, BC. Captain Brendan McDonald, pilot, original from, originally from New Glasgow, Nova Scotia. Captain Maxime Miran Morin, originally from Trois-Rivières, Quebec. <clears throat> Excuse me, and Master Corporal Matt Cousins, Airborne sensor operator, originally from Guelph, Ontario. These are all confirmed missing. The search goes on. So what happened? How could a state-of-the-art aircraft that has only been in operation for about two years have gone down? Let's find out some details. The Defence Minister, Harjit Sajjan, joins us from Ottawa. Uh, first of all, Minister, our deepest condolences go out to the men and women who serve our country so bravely every single day. And I know the investigation on this tragedy is ongoing, but can you give our, any of us any uh, new details about what you've learned about this tragic accident? Uh, first of all, I want to pass on my deepest condolences to Abigail's uh, family um, and also the families of the five missing that we will leave no stone uh, unturned. And that's exactly what's happening now. I've been on the phone with the NATO Secretary General and some of my counterparts um, and the efforts uh, that are currently ongoing, uh, the search efforts, that uh, we'll make all resources uh, uh, available uh, in this regard. And the uh, commander on the ground uh, will continue this effort uh, until he sees um, otherwise. And that's what we'll do. Um, and they, we owe it to the family to make sure that we put all this effort in, and we will. Can you let's go over what happened here? Um, General Vance, the CDS, said there's a wide debris field. Um, they say the ship, the frigate Fredericton, lost contact at 6.52 local time. That's the uh, Greek time. Uh, can you tell us what do we know about what was going on? Well, we've uh, provided as much information as we can uh, to Canadians and to the families of what, what we know. But it's very important for us now to let the investigators to get on the ground to determine um, uh, what has gone on. Uh, we had, as we've already stated, we've recovered the uh, data and voice recorders and we'll conduct the analysis there. But I wanna, don't want to speculate in any regard. But one thing I can assure you that we will get to the bottom of this and we'll make sure that the families um, are kept fully in the loop of what, is, uh, what transpired. Uh, Minister, how long will the search for the other five go on for? Um, the search is going to go on as long as necessary. The commander on the ground will determine this. Um, they're continuing from the time that this incident took place uh, and, and as of right now. Um, we haven't, we, there is no timeline set to this. It'll be conditions based, based on what the commander feels, uh, based on the, the depths of the water, uh, the debris field. Um, it'll go on as long as necessary, but it's the commander on the ground that will make that decision. Uh, but one thing I can assure is that uh, the data secretary general, all my counterparts have uh, offered their full support and it's been, um, uh, uh, it resources have been brought in from all countries to making sure that we have all the helicopter surveillance and, uh, tools necessary for this, uh, for this search effort. Uh, I know the, the flight data has been uh, found 
But we know that a flare was released. Was the flare in sight? Did the, did the men and women on the Fredericton see the flare? And can you give us a sense of how close it might have been to the Fredericton? Um, we can't give you exact details of how far it was because I don't have the answer. We wanna, we'll want to let the people on the ground continue on with the search. So we don't want to uh, inundate them with questions uh, too much just yet. Uh, the investigators will determine that. But one thing we can tell you is that uh, the flares were observed uh, uh, from uh, Fredericton. Uh, and, uh, you know, from this, we, we, what we don't want to do is infer and speculate what, uh, what has gone on. We owe it to the families to get to the bottom and get the correct answers for them. And that's one thing I can assure you that we will get to this. And uh, the flight safety team is, um, will be leaving today, if not uh, by tomorrow. And we'll make sure that the families are looked after and all appropriate protocols um, uh, are followed. Uh, Minister, the flight safety teams will may have already left, as you say, to, to try to I analyze the uh, voice box and the flight data box. How long will that take? When will we have any information about the speed, the, uh, the altitude, and maybe what happened to the helicopter? Well, that will be determined by the investigators um, to determine what has gone on. Uh, as we kind of move forward uh, with the investigation, um, we will look at the preliminary fi uh, findings. And when it's appropriate, uh, we will make sure that uh, we share this information uh, with the families to keep them updated uh, on what's going on and also with, uh, with Canadians as well. But it's way too early uh, to tell about uh, any type of uh, timeline. But one thing I can assure you uh, from, uh, from previous uh, experience and incidents that uh, the investigative team is extremely thorough to get, um, uh, provide the appropriate recommendations. And through those recommendations, uh, it allows right. us to and prevent future things like this. I know it's early, but has the military ruled out any potential foul play in this, friendly fire or otherwise? Based on um, what we uh, uh, know so far, because it was a training exercise, and given that this is a frigate that has a lot of capability to know uh, and determine threats, um, that there is no indication of any that this was un, un, under contact. But we will go through a full investigation to making sure that uh, we look at, uh, answer all the questions, not rule anything out, uh, just right. so that we, we, we are through. Uh, Mr. Last question. The other, there's an operational pause on the rest of the fleet. Uh, again, these fleet, this fleet has only been in operation for about two years. How long will all the cyclones essentially be grounded for, do you know? But there is no time uh, timeline for this. Uh, these are uh, prudent measures uh, that we uh, put in, into place. Uh, we take it very seriously to look after the safety and security of our Canadian Armed Forces members. Uh, once the, the commander of the Air Force has the necessary information from the investigative team, uh, we'll make a deliberation on, on the next steps of this. But it's way too early to tell. We want to make sure that we put the right resources in and leave no stone unturned for this effort. Uh, Minister, again, please pass from the entire country. Our condolences to, on to the men and women who serve our country so bravely. And I know this is a very difficult day, especially, again, for the people of Nova Scotia. Minister, appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. No, thank you. I mean, just a reminder to all Canadians that as we do deal with COVID-19, we have our troops all over the world uh, providing uh, security and uh, keeping us safe. Yeah, they absolutely, and including in our long-term care facilities right now. Okay, that is your Defence Minister, Harjit Sajjan. Thank you.